Hi everyone, welcome to the episode 13 of XCA Badcast, a series of bad size tips and tricks that you can use in any of your project. In the previous Badcast 12 episode, we have learned on how to make class conform to sendable protocol with treat safe back GCD multiple properties. In this video, we're going to continue to explore Shift 6 strict concurrency by learning how to implement global actor using a class with mutable properties, so its execution runs within a particular thread or context, making it treat safe at build time with compiler check. You can watch the previous video from the link I've provided at the description below. If you want to code along, please download the starter project from the GitHub repository at the description as well. So let me give you a brief overview of the starter project. So the starter project itself is basically the completed project from the previous Badcast 12 episode. Okay, here we have several classes that come from to standable. We have this network API manager, analytics manager, and this user model. Okay, so for all the classes without mutable properties such as this user model and this network API manager, we add the sendable conformance and mark it with the final keyword. So with this, all of them can be accessed and passed across different isolation domain boundaries contexts. For this analytic manager, we have one mutable properties. So we're not going to be able to mark this class with the standard sendable and final. So we add this uncheck keyword which basically promised the compiler that this type is thread safe but you don't need to check this at the build time we're ensuring the thread safety access at the runtime using this thread safe property wrapper which basically use gcd under the hood to make sure the property is thread safe for write and read across different threads as you can see in here so this is the starter project now we're going to learn about how to update this to use global actor and still achieve the treat safety with addition of compiler check and verification at the build time okay let's begin by learning what is the global actor so i have prepared prepared this slide presentation let, let me start the slideshow and let me try to explain what is a global actor so global actor is basically a type that represents a globally unique actor that can be used to isolate various declaration anywhere in the program. So it's basically a single shared instance of an actor type that the system can use to execute certain tasks in a specific context. And synchronization is performed through this shared actor instance or singleton to ensure mutually exclusive access to the declaration. And global actors are very useful for ensuring that specific parts of your code, for example, UI related class, always executes on the same thread or actor context. So global actor thread safe access is also verified by the compiler. So any possible thread safe issue will produce build time error. So it won't make it to production before we fix those issue. And class marked with the global actor doesn't make it explicitly conform to sendable. So we don't need to mark the class as final, so it can still be subclass if we want. Next, so main actor. So you might have seen this declaration of main actor in your code. As a matter of fact, uh, the few model that we use is also marked with the main actor. So what is a main actor? Swift basically provides a built-in main actor as a global actor. This ensures that any code marked with this runs on the main thread or UI thread. And also almost all of the UI kit classes, for example, UI view controller, UI view, UI responder, they are marked with main actor to make sure its concurrent execution runs on the main thread to update the UI. Also, Steve UI view is marked with this main actor. Okay. So let me show you, right? this UI view controller. If you see the declaration in documentation, it is marked with the main actor. So it means this will always run in a global actor within the UI thread. This one also, see if UI view is also marked with the main actor. Okay. And, and final one, 
how do we create a global actor so let's say we don't want to use the main actor or the main thread so to do that first we declare an actor and mark mark it with the global actor as you can see in here and then we provide a static let share declaration which make this uh, a singleton for the access and also what we can do is basically for any type that we want to execute this in a particular context or thread we just mark it with the actor that we have created in this example as you can see this network IP manager is marked with this network actor so this will always run within this network actor isolation context or thread okay now let's move back to our code and let's try to implement a global actor to these classes okay so before we begin implementation i want to show you the few model that i mentioned before so if you see closely in here this view model is marked with the main actor okay so this means all the execution of the code inside this class will run within the main actor isolation boundaries okay so all of them but there's one exception which is the send user telemetry if you see in here we explicitly create a detached task to basically track the user did login using the analytics manager so when we use a detached task this will basically run in a non-isolated context out of the main actor isolation domain boundaries okay so this works because we have already make this analytic managers conform to the sendable protocol so it can be passed around domain isolation boundaries and we also have the mutability of this lag last log in user work because we already have this unchecked sendable but we make sure to ensure the thread safety at runtime using this thread safe property wrapper okay so if you see we are already using this global actor in the form of main actor which will basically update this view model in a ui thread okay so now let's go back to the manager and begin the implementation of global actor. Okay, so let's begin the implementation starting from the network API manager. So let's create a global actor specific to networking. So all of the networking execution should run in this uh, global actor or execution context. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is just create this global actor. Create this macro global actor and then declare an actor give it a name of network actor and remember that we need to create a singleton okay this is required so let's give the name of shared and then initialize this okay we already have this global network actor singleton now it's very simple we just need now we need to remove this conformance of sendable because we don't need it anymore we can simply update this to attach the network actor in here so all the execution will be within the network actor isolation domain boundaries context or thread okay and let's try to build okay there is an error If you see the global actor network uh, network actor isolated the full value in a main actor isolated context so as you remember this view model is marked with the main actor so it is tied to the main actor isolation domain boundaries okay so how can we fix this so what we can do is basically go back to the network api manager and update this static let shared by adding the non-isolated keyword okay and also the initializer okay so this basically means that we should be able to access them from any isolation boundaries it should be safe as this is a singleton now let's try to build it again okay the build succeeded okay so ready updated this to network api major to use the global network actor 
so all the execution will happen within this network actor thread or isolation context now let's do the same for the analytics manager let's also create a global actor specific for the analytics purposes so let's declare global actor and declare an actor give it a name of analytics actor okay and let's create a singleton as well and initialize it with the analytics actor okay and then we just need to mark the type for the analytics sector that we want to use so this analytics manager let's add the analytics actor so it can run within the analytics actor thread or isolation context okay so uh, same it gives the same error so we also need to make this non-isolated for the singleton access and the initializer as well okay but if you see there is two different error even after we implement those so if you see closely in here as i have mentioned before this is a detached task so this will basically runs on the non-isolated context out of the main actor context right but because we already have updated this analytics manager to be tied to the this analytics actor isolation domain boundaries this will basically throw an error the compiler okay so expression is async but it's not marked with a weight so one thing that we can do for this invocation we can mark this with a weight okay this will make sure the method is executed on the analytics actor association context while suspending the current context okay but for the second error as this is basically mutating the property on the analytics manager we won't be able to use a weight for this okay this doesn't work so what we can do is we need to make sure this mutation happens on the analytics actor execution context to do this we can basically update this task okay and basically attach this to the analytics actor execution context by adding this annotation okay so this will basically work we can mutate this and we don't even need to add the await keyword for this because this already happens in the analytics analytics actor situation boundaries right this analytics manager okay and with this we should be able to mutate the property without any issue okay so that's it we already make this change and if you see in here let's go back to the analytics manager First, we don't need this thread self property wrapper anymore, so we can remove this. Okay, and the build is still succeeded, and this is still thread self because any mutation with in this analytics manager will throw an error if it doesn't happen in the analytics actor isolation domain boundaries. So we need to explicitly tell the compiler to do it. Okay, because if you remember, this main actor by default is runs within the main actor isolation context, so it's a different isolation boundaries. So if you just use task, right, with this, by default, it will inherit the parent, which is the main actor. So it will throw an error because we're trying to change this, invoke this, and mutate this within a different domain isolation boundaries. For invocation of the method, we can always use a wait okay, to suspend the current isolation domain boundaries and then run this within the analytics manager global actor but for the mutation this won't work okay that's just i want to tell you okay so we need to mark this within the analytics actor isolation boundaries and next thing that i want to also mention right so any return type that we use right in here within a global actor this will also needs to confirm to sendable otherwise this will throw an error so let's say i remove the sendable conformance and i try to run the code 
If you see, this will throw an error, right? Non-sendable type user returned by implicitly unchronous, asynchronous call to global actor network actor result function cannot cross the actor boundary. Okay, so we cannot just pass any non-sendable type when we invoke it around different domain isolation boundaries. Okay, so we need to make the return type also confirm to sendable so it can be passed across different domain boundaries. So if you refer it back to standable, then the error will be removed. Okay, and that's basically for this video. We have learned how to use global actor in a class to achieve thread safety while adhering to the Swift concurrency and compiler validation. So there is no need to use the plain old GCD explicitly in our code unless we really need it for specific use case. Okay. So this thread safe property wrapper that uses the plain old GCD, we don't really need this by default, okay? But it is still possible to use that for any specific use case if you want, okay? Because it's also providing the thread safe access for read and write as well within a ascendable class, okay? So that's it. Like this video if you like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and thanks for supporting me so far. And finally, let's keep on being a lifelong learner and until the next video, goodbye.